So today uh, I had a talk on drive into IoT with Audino. This is presented by Dr. Pradosh Sanjan Sahu, Senior Assistant Professor in the School of Electronics Engineering. So before starting, uh, we need to know what is IoT. So as, you, as all of you know that IoT basically can say that it is Internet of Things. So what is Internet of Things? So when I am saying this word, Internet of Things, so these things will come. So what is basically that things? So basically it is the network of physical objects or things. So the things can say that. So the things are the embedded with sensors, software and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and system over the internet. So what, what can be the things that things can be? A person with heart monitor implant or a farm animal with biochip transponder. Okay. Suppose we are putting a heart monitor or a farm animal with a biochip. So that you can say that these are the things or you can say that automobile that has built in sensors to alert the drive when the tire pressure is low. So we can say that anything uh, we can put uh, some sensors and some controller and that data we can transfer through internet. So that is called things. Okay. Suppose a light bulb, we can take example of a light bulb. Okay. So if that light bulb or that tube light, if you can control by using internet or using smartphone different app, that particular <coughs> light bulb is also called things. Okay. So in this IoT, uh, this internet of things, so when all the things are connected through internet, so basically uh, we can divide this IoT into basically three groups, one is electronic technology, second one is your network technology, third one is information technology. So you can see in this figure, this electronics technology, basically we are showing with some sensors, uh, some circuits, some microcontrollers. And this NATO technology deals with all the internet protocols, how you are transferring the data from the sensors or microcontroller to the cloud. Then in information technology, we have some user interfaces or uh, graphics user interface. Suppose we are using a laptop or your smartphones to control the things or to control the uh, device. So here in our today's topic, we will going to deal with the electric technology. So basically it deals with the uh, your different sensors from which will get the real time data like humidity, temperature, uh, uh, pressure and we will control this thing using some microcontroller. So, we will change this PPT. So, start with the Arduino board. So, when we will go to the Arduino, so all of you know about uh, we are using Arduino in different cases. So, basically Arduino is open source electronic platform based on easy to use hardware and software. So using this Arduino we can use different types of applications like we can uh, read inputs uh, from a sensor using a finger and button or Twitter message. We can all these applications we can use through the Arduino boards. We can turn into an output, we can activate the motor remotely, we can turn on the LED publishing something in online. All these applications we can do using Arduino boards. Next. We have different types of Arduino boards. So as all of you know, little bit. So there are different types of Arduino board is coming like Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, Arduino Nano, ESP32, etc. So basically, these Arduino boards based upon the microcontroller. Depending upon the microcontroller, this Arduino board will change. So Arduino based uh, some Arduino boards based on Atmega328. Some Arduino boards also based on Atmega320U4. Similarly, so depending upon the different Arduino boards or, or that different depending on the different microcontroller, our Arduino boards will vary. So basically, what is Arduino board? Suppose you'll ask what is Arduino. So out of this Arduino boards, I am selecting Arduino Uno. So it is one open source microcontroller board. You can see here. You can see here. So this is a Arduino Uno board. Okay. So, Arduino is an open source microcontroller board in which Atmega 328 Arduino microcontroller is there. So, that is called Arduino Uno R3 or, or in some cases Atmega 4809 is also there that is called Arduino Uno Wi-Fi R2. 
So these microcontrollers are prepared by Atmel company. This is the first USB powered board developed by the Arduino. Then, so in how we will use this Arduino? So basically in Arduino we are having some microcontroller with some uh, uh, 28 pins. So in these pins are distributed in that board so that we can get some digital inputs and outputs. So that by using these digital pins or analog pins we can get some sensor data uh, from a different type of sensor. So when I am writing any program or want to write any program for that we use some languages. So here in Arduino we are writing this code using some similar type of language like C or C++. So that language or that program or that code will write in Arduino ID. So basically this development environment writing in Arduino ID. Okay, so you can see in this figure there is this is the picture of Arduino Uno. This is Arduino Uno you can see here in my hand this is the Arduino Uno board is there. So you can see here in this Arduino Uno uh, this is the back side of Arduino you can see in this slide also. So basically this Arduino board is having 6 analog input pins, 14 digital IO pins out of which 6 can be used as pulse width modulation output. So here one 16 megahertz ceramic crystal regenerator is there which is producing 16 megahertz frequency for that microcontroller. So one USB port is there, some ISCP header is there that is in circuit serial programming header is there, one power jack is there, some one reset button is also there. So this is the basic uh, things that is present in the Arduino Uno board. Okay. So you can you can see so you can see in this uh, diagram you can see <coughs> different type different types of uh, things that is embedded in this Arduino board. So you can see this is a barrel jack which is taking 7 to 12 volt of power to power this total Arduino board then there is a voltage regulator is there you can see one 16 megahertz or crystal oscillator is there similarly this is your USB B port so there is a USB B type port is there then this is the reset button you can see in the right hand side we are having 14 digital pins are there so this 40 out of this 14 digital pins some pins are multiplexed so that that means same pin can be used as pulse with modulated pin similarly in left hand side you can see there is some analog pins are there there is total six number of analog pins so these analog pins are only input pins so they can get only analog signals from the analog sensors so similarly there are some three ground uh, total five ground pins are there then one five voltage five volt voltage output 3.3 volt voltage output then one reset pin is there so we will go one by one what is the function of the each component in the Arduino board you can go to the next slide okay. so you can see here so can you zoom in so you can see here so this is called barrel jack so through which we are giving a DC power supply to the Arduino board okay. so this this is uh, using some adapter we can give 5 to 20 volt to this jack to power on the Arduino or basically which is recommended to give 7 to 12 volt. Then we will go to the next slide. So you can see here this is the USB B port. You can see here this is the USB B port of the uh, Arduino board. So in this USB B port, so using this cable, so so this is one type is USB type and another is USB B port. So where we can use this cable to power on the Arduino as well as to transfer all the codes what are writing for this Arduino, Arduino Uno for this microcontroller. So one end can be connected to the USB and another end can be connected to the USB B port. So basically it will taking only 5 volt power supply to switch on the Arduino. Then we will move to the next slide. So in the next slide you can see here we are talking about a input, uh, input terminal or input point that is called V in. So you can see in this side in this side there is a pin called V in in this side here it is called one pin is V in so in this V in pin also we can uh, give a 5 volt power supply to uh, give uh, to operate this microcontroller so 
So, it is a moderated DC supply voltage which is used to regulate the ICs used in the connection. <coughs> so, according to that, uh, after that we can see there are some voltage regulator is there. You can see this is the voltage regulator. So, this is the voltage regulator, this small black one or you can see in the screen this is a red one. This is called voltage regulator which will giving the regulated power supply of 5 volt. So, sometimes what happen if there is a fluctuation in voltage then this voltage regulator will regulate the voltage and will supply the constant DC voltage of 5 volt. So, this is the all about your voltage regulator. Then this this uh, particular symbol you can see this is called C crystal oscillator. This is called crystal oscillator. Okay, I am pointing out here this is called crystal oscillator. Okay. So, this or you can see in this diagram. So, this red oval type structure is called crystal oscillator. So, this crystal oscillator will provide a frequency of 16 megahertz. So, which will provide a type basing and timing and control signal to the microcontroller. Next you can see this one is your reset button. So, this is called your reset button. So, this reset button is used to reset the Arduino board. So, it is recommended to press the button every time when we flash the code to the board. So, before flashing or before dumping the code to the Arduino board, we can use this microcontroller, use this reset button. Then there are some two I2C, <coughs> one I2C pin is there, this is called inter-integrated circuits. So, you can see here, so this is one I2C pin and this is also I2C pin. So, the two sets of I2C, <coughs> I2C pins are there. So, the full form of I2C is inter-integrated circuits. So, basically it is used for send and receive data. So, basically first you can see in this figure, this is called serial clock, this is called serial clock and this is called your serial data. We, okay. <coughs> then move to the next slide, we are having some two interrupt pins. So, these two interrupt pins are uh, both are external. So, this is called interrupt 1 pin and interrupt 2 pin. So, you can see your threads number, number of pins is 3 and 2. So, you can see this is the pin number 3, this is pin number 2. So, this pin number 3 and pin number 2 is used for the interrupt pins. Similarly, the pin number 0 and 1, the pin number 0 and 1, so it is written your TXT and RXT. So, TXT stands for transmission, RXT stands for reception okay so basically this txt and rxt will send the data using the txt and will receive the data uh, from the any of the uh, <coughs> other microcontrollers or other boards then this is the basic thing uh, or the basic fundamental things so as i told arduino having six analog pins so you can see here it is written here a0 to a5 a0 to A5. So, this A0 to A5 are the six analog pins which that will use analog to digital convert to get the analog pin to convert into digital. Okay. So, this ADC is having a, so this pins having inside this board there is a ADC. So, this ADC is having 10 bit of resolution. So, basically if I am giving a 5 volt of supply, so this 5 volt of supply will be divided into 1023 bits. So, each bit will get around 0 0.05 kind of millivolt of uh, voltage. Then we will move, we will talk about the digital pins. So, there are total 14 digital pins are available in the right hand side you can see this is starting from 0 it will go up to 13. This is total 14 digital pins are there. So, so this and here in this th pin number 13 is called inbuilt LED. So, this pin number 13 is connected to a LED here. So, it is internally connected. So, this digital pins uh, can be your input pin or can be your output pin. So, basically this, this will give the either a high value as a output or low value as a output or you can receive also high value or low value. If I am giving high value that can be 5 volt, if it is I am saying low value it can be less than 1.5 volt. Okay. Then there are some pins are there, the, you can see in the screen the pin number 3, 5, 6, 
9, 10 and 11. So, these are the pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11. So, in, you can see in this figure also there is a tilde symbol is there, tilde symbol. 3, these pins are called PWM pins. So, this PWM stands for pulse width modulation. It is called pulse width modulation. So, it means an analog value can be modulated on a digital signal. That means this PWM signals can be used to for proper applications like you, if you want to increase the speed of the servo motor, if you increase or decrease the intensity of the light that is used for that. Then you can see in this screen, so how this pulse width modulated signals will be generated. So basically this pulse width modulated signals can either mimic or simulate the effects of pure analog signal. So you can see that, so here in the right hand side there is a different type of different width pulse are there. So here when I am going from top to down the width of the pulse is increasing. So in this pulse, so for a particular time the pulse is on in this pulse is be there for a particular time and the rest of the time the, there is no pulse or the signal amplitude is zero. So in this total for a 20 percent time so there is a signal and for 80 percent of time there is no signal. So this is called duty cycle. So duty cycle basically we are calculating as T on divided by T on plus T off or T on divided by total time. Similarly, so depending upon the different width of the pulse, so we are getting different duty cycles. So using these dif different duty cycles, we can uh, uh, use this signal or fed the signal to generate different type of voltage across the PWM outputs. Then you can see you can see in the next slide. So there is a ground pin as I told you earlier. There are total five number of ground pins are there, and one reset bottom is there. And there is a IO reference voltage pin is also there. So this IO reference voltage pin is a input or output reference. It is provided the voltage reference at which the microcontroller is currently operating. Similarly, we can get a 3.3 volt of output or 5 volt of output. You can see here. So you can see here a 3.3 volt of output or a 5 volt of output we can get from these two pins. So if you want to connect or if you want to required any 3.3 volt or 5 volt from this particular board we can get from this. Then so you can see uh, can you focus this ok so you can focus here. So here we are using two different type of microcontrollers. So this is your 28 pin Atmega 328 microcontroller and this is your Atmega 16 UT microcontroller. So this is Atmega 16 UT microcontroller. So why am I using? So basically, when I'm dumping a data, so it is giving a. Uh, I want to write a code on this microcontroller. So this is transferred to the USB cable. So this USB language, this microcontroller cannot understand. So so this Atmega 328 does not know the USB language or protocol. Okay, so it knows only serial protocol or it is known as IC protocol. So to communicate with this PC with the microcontroller we need Atmega 16 UT. So so basically this one Atmega 16 UT so this particular uh, microcontroller will be convert this USB data to the serial port so that this Atmega 328 can be can understand. Then next about this heart of the Arduino board that is your Atmega 328. Okay, so this is 28 pin uh, microprocessor. So here you can see so its operating voltage is 5 volt and its input voltage also 17 to 12 volt and <coughs> so here we are having 14 pins out of which 6 are PWM pins. There is an analog input pins of 6 Compared, there is total total six analog input pins. Okay. So here the current DC current per IO pin or 14 milliampere. So so here in this uh, digital output pin you can get 40 milli 40 milliampere of current. 
similarly in 3.3 volt pin we will get 50 milliampere ampere com current so in this 8 mega 328 we have 32 kilo byte of flash memory and sram of 2 kilo byte and electrical erasable prom that means electrical erasable programmable read only memory is 1 kilobyte and it is operating on 16 megahertz this clock speed is 16 megahertz as equal to the crystal oscillator what the frequency is generated by the crystal oscillator so its length is 6 millimeter width is 4 millimeter and weight is 25 gram only okay now if now we have a basic idea of what is inside this at mega this Arduino you know so we have a microcontroller at mega 328 there is a 16 ut microcontroller then they we have 14 digital pins six analog pins some uh, voltage input and output pins so one usb b type port is there barrel jack is there some crystal oscillator is there one voltage regulator is there now how to write the code and for that how to simulate the code okay you can see here we can by the use of hardware by the use of this breadboard so by the use of breadboard and we have some sensors also so this is your PIR sensor this is your DST sensor this is your gas sensor by the help of different wires we can uh, make the circuit using breadboard and to write the code we need a IDE software ok so you can can I share my screen can I, can I share my screen no ok I want to I want to show this thing can you click there huh? ok so you can see here uh, we have Arduino there are different Arduino emulator and simulators are there so first one is that uh, this is very famous online simulator that is called Okui simulator so you can click on that link so Okui simulator similarly we have another simulator that is called Autodesk or Tinkercad circuits ok so then Simul IDE also another software so by using this three famous uh, online simulators similarly we have some offline simulators like Proteus, Fridging, Pixim Lab, Arduino simulator by Victronics and Simulid. So you can open once. Okay. It'll be visible now. Once you check. Okay. Now you can see. Uh, so this is your Okui simulator. So here they are giving some facilities to work on the Arduino. So now you can click on this uh, Arduino board. So you can see there are different already different softwares are there, and if already programs are there, so you can go down. So there are uh, different boards you can available like Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, Arduino Nano. Similarly. You will get some workout examples are there like using uh, different sensors. So already different people have programmed different uh, 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 programs using different sensors that you can check also. Now you can go to the Tinkercad also. So you can go to the slide. You can open the Tinkercad. This is another software, so you can go to the Tinkercad. Mm -hmm. So once you open the Tinkercad, you can go to the Tinker, you go to circuits. Okay, so similarly here also you can do this uh, simulation of the Arduino boards. Now uh, for the 
hardware how to do the simulation for that Arduino ID will be required so you can open Arduino ID just write down this Arduino ID Arduino A R D U I A uh, so open that Arduino ID okay so you can go to the Arduino ID so you can go click on the software so in the software you can go go to the software and you can download this Arduino ID okay. so this Arduino ID 2.2.1 you can download so all the codes you need to write down there and once you write the code you have to verify the code then after verifying the code you have to dump the code okay Okay, go to the next slide. Okay. Battery, your battery, your battery is going down. Okay. Next is that how to write the ordinary program. Then to write the Arduino program, so basically Arduino programming is divided into three main parts. First one is the function, then in the function there is some digital I.O. means digital input and output is there, then analog input output is there, there is some time, there is some communication, there is some math and some USB characters are there. So inside each there are some different functions, are, functions will be there. some functions will be there so we are discussing very few so very frequently will be will require this digital input and output because we are dealing with basically digital input and output pins similarly analog input and output pins then time as well as communication next we'll go to the values so in these values there is variable and constants so in this thing you can you will be basically frequently will use constants data types variables similar in structure we have some arithmetic operators pointers uh, control structures comparison operators so you can click there you can click there you can see okay now you can see scroll down you can see here in functions we have digital input output then analog input output then math random numbers bits bytes so advanced io then if you go down you will get time then in variables in variables basically data types and constants so in constant we will deal with high low input output led built in true false similarly i will get uh, some integer float numbers in structure will use this all this arithmetic operator b to operator comparators then in further syntax so we'll use define include then single line comments semicolons all these things we are going to use next we we'll move to the next slide okay. Can be full screen. So when you we'll go to the uh, functions, so in functions we are going to frequently used functions. So in digital input and output, we have to decide the first one is that pin mode. This is pin mode, pin comma mode. So first we have to decide which pin we will take, and this pin will be used as the input pin or output pin. Okay. So if I'll write down pin mode, the pin number is three, and mode I'll write I'll write output. Then I can use this pin number three as the output pin. Similarly, <coughs> go to the next command. This is digital read. So digital read. Then this is pin number. So basically, it will read the values from the specified digital pin, either high or low. So <coughs> suppose I'll write digital read pin number thirteen. So it is going to read. The high value or low value from the pin number 13. Similarly, you can write down digital write. So this is all about your digital read. 
then if i want to write down the digital right pin the command is digital right pin comma value that means i want to write down in the particular high or low to that particular digital pin similarly we'll go to the analog io so in analog io so as i told there is total six number of analog pins and in these six analog pins we will get the analog values from the analog sensors like i told this is the gas sensor is your analog sensor so this gas sensor is your analog sensor similarly uh, some ln35 is your analog sensors so from there we will get the analog value so for that to read this value we will need analog read pin okay so the command is analog read you can see m is capital here in pin mode m is capital in digital read r is capital in analog read r is also capital so in this fashion we need to write down so this pin number will suggest from which pin i want to write down so in analog pin we will write down a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 or a5 so basically it reads the value from the specified analog pin and it will return the integer value so suppose i want to write down a temperature that must be 35 or 42 so it should be integer value then how to write down the analog value so using this analog write command analog write then pin number then what value i want to write down so that we can use using this particular command also we can write down this analog value this pwm wave also suppose paul switch modulated wave also we can write down using this command so when i'm writing paul switch modulated uh, signal so our duty cycle between 0 to 255 so 0 saying always off this 255 says always on similarly if we'll discuss about the time we are using a command delay delay in bracket millisecond suppose i'm writing delay 1000 millisecond that means it will pause the program for amount of 1000 milliseconds or one second then in communication so when this microcontroller or this Arduino board wants to communicate with them some other devices for that it will communicate with the serial method <coughs> the serial method so for that we are using some serial data so for that we are using the command serial dot begin then speed that means it will set the data rate bits per second that means it will start the serial communication with the baud rate or the baud rate of uh, prescribed amount so suppose i am writing serial dot begin 9600 that means it will open the serial port and sets the data rate to 9600 bits per second then serial print serial print means we need to print some value on the serial port as human readable form so suppose i'm write i'll write serial dot print 35 so it will show the value 35 suppose i want to write down some character so i have to write down in double code serial dot print suppose i'll write in serial print hello world so i need to write down in double quote similarly you can write down serial dot print ln so the serial dot print ln will show the value same as serial dot print but the output will go to the next line next next slide you can go to what are the uh, frequently used variables we are using so basically we are using high and low okay so high means uh, it depends upon the which type of mode we are using so in if in the pin mode i am using uh, digital read so if I'm, then it is it is your three then it is your three volt a voltage greater than three volt is presented as the uh, high in 5 volt board if i'm using a 3.3 volt board then it is your 2 volt similarly if the pin is used as the output pin in the pin mode i'm writing output so for the digital write so 5 volt is used as the high 3.3 volt is also used as high similarly for low low basically will give if the voltage is less than 1.5 volt or for 5 volt port it is treated as low then we are using some different data types like uh, integer data type or flow data type so in integer we can write down integer then variable equal to value that means the data type is integer type 
so this variable will give the variable name and equal to value means this variable is assigned to the particular uh, variable similarly float equal to variable equal to value so that means the variable is a float type and we are assigning this value to that particular variable next we'll go to the special syntax so in special syntax uh, first one is the define has defined so has defined constant name and value so has defined is used to give a name to a constant value because before the program is compiled suppose i am writing has defined some constant name let led value is 13 that means i am giving this led the variable name or constant name led equal to 13 similarly i can write down include also so include means where if you want to include some different libraries to the sketch so using include you can write down you can include the different libraries then this double backslash line is called a single line comment whatever i will write in that it will not be compiled then the semicolon semicolon is used to end the statement you remember whenever i am writing define or include there you will not get any semicolon go to the next slide then you can see uh, in the programming how will write a programming so, so basically the programming starts with the define that is not mandatory that means as i told we can write down the we can define some pins with variables either we can write down define or define led 12 or we can write down integer we can give some integer value then some variable and we can assign the pin numbers then the code we want to write it will go for only once so we will write down void setup so inside this curly braces we will write down the <coughs> which pin is used as uh, which mode so suppose i want to write down this pin number 12 will be used for output pin or input pin and here also in this void setup we can start the program for the serial port or we can start the code for the serial dot begin then the border rate then in void loop whatever program i will write in this code that will go in the loop that will continuously go unless until we will stop the program so basically in the void loop we will write the main code which will run repeatedly okay. we will go to the next program so you can see here this is the simple program this is the simple program so in this program i want to i am using this code to blink a led to blink a led so that led we can blink internally as i told so there is an internal led is there which is connected to pin number 13 that internal led we can blink okay so first i am defining the you can understand clearly so first i am defining this led so it is has defined then led 2 13 that means so led 2 is a constant so which is assigned to this pin number 13 so now the pin number 13 is assigned to led 2 or instead of that also you can write down constant integer led equal to 13 that also you can write down then in the void setup we wrote how we are going to write that particular pin so i wrote pin mode so a pin mode so this pin what type of mode we want to use so pin mode led2 i am writing led2 equal to 13 so this pin number 13 i want to use the output pin so we'll write pin mode 13 then led2 your output that means we initialize the pin number 13 as the output pin then void then we want to write down the main program so in the main program writing void loop so <coughs> so first i want to write i want to give a high signal to the particular pin that means digital write led2 high that means we will turn on the led that means i am giving a high signal to that particular pin and <coughs> then i wrote delay delay 1000 that means this led will will be high or will glow and it will be glowing for a one milli one second or one thousand millisecond. 
so after that then i wrote digital right led to low so that means i am giving a low signal that means less voltage to this particular pin number 13 okay as i told this pin number 13 already a inbuilt uh, led is there so now this particular led or this particular pin will be give, receiving a low signal for a delay of 1000 second okay so we can we can show this using hardware can you focus the hardware you can see here this is this is this is the pin so here in pin number 13 I am giving a, I have taken one output to a particular LED. I have connected this LED like this. Then I need to put a ground also. You can take ground pin. So, so I have connected ground also here. Now already I have I wrote this program. So in my laptop I will op I'll open this ID.
okay so i want to run this code in my Arduino id2 point but it is showing some error it is showing missing uh, board name so what I'll, i want to do i want to write the which board i am choosing so i'll write i'll choose my board Arduino uno and port so basically you can you can go to this board and you can choose your board also here so I already choose Arduino uno similarly to which port you are want to communicate with this data to this microcontroller or Arduino Uno. So I wrote now Arduino Uno. Now here in the left corner you can see we, are, we can verify the code. So it is showing some error here. So which error I can uh, see here which error it is showing. is being again some error okay yeah. already this code is there you can go to file you can open the examples you can go to basic you can you can see here this blink is there so you can open this code this is the same code this is the same code so instead of pin mode LED built in so you can see here, so the LED built in is your pin number 13. So you can see here, you can see here this LED is blinking. Okay, so what we will do uh, now, I will change this one. So I will give pin number 13. See now, so you can see here the same code I wrote again. This is I am directly writing this pin mode, the pin number 13. I am using as the output pin. Okay, then I wrote the code. So I, I want to be this pin, I want to give a high voltage to this particular pin. So I wrote digital write pin number 13, then high. Then this will be delayed for the one second so i wrote delay 1000 then digital write 13 low then i want this particular LED should off for a second that's why i'm giving a signal low that means it will give a very less voltage so that this will be off then this will off will be stayed for a some time now i can change the on and off time also so if i write suppose i will i want to delay 5000 so for 5 seconds it will be on, for 1 second it will be off. So after writing, I will go, I will verify first. So once it will verify, you can see here, it will, it, the name will come, sketch uses 932 bytes of program storage space, maximum is 32256 bytes. So once this letter will come, that means your program is successfully verified, then you can go to upload. So when I will click upload, that means it will upload it to the microcontroller so here in the pin number 13 i connected the led one end positive end and negative end connected to the ground pin okay so now you can see this led is blinking for 5 second if you on for 5 second and off for 1 second similarly we can take 3 or 4 leds we can write different programs we can blink that LED. So similarly, you can uh, write down the small, small program for the traffic light. You can take three LEDs, red, green, and yellow. You can write down for how many seconds you want to red signal, for how many seconds you want green signal, for how many seconds you want yellow signal. In this manner, you can uh, write the program. Okay. Now I'll go to some other programs. 
so we can uh, there are some other programs like we'll use security system how to make a security system using your pir sensor that also we are going to discuss open this slide okay. now we can switch up okay. now you can see here uh, as one is security system so you can see in security system we are using a pir sensor so in pir sensor and one buzzer is here so in this buzzer i connected one led so you can see this pir sensor or this is the pir sensor so this So this is your PIR sensor. So in this PIR sensor, it have three pins. So it is have three pins. You can see here, one, two, three. So here it is written. One pin is used as the ground pin, and the middle pin is the out pin or data pin, and the right corner pin is called VCC. The same thing you can see here. Here uh, this pin, one pin is connected to the pin number, uh, the digital pin number two. So the the slide you can see. one pin is connected the data data pin is connected to the pin number 2 and this another pin is connected to the 5 volt or the vcc pin is connected to the 5 volt and another pin is connected to the ground along with the negative of the buzzer and it is connected to the ground okay and pin number 2 uh, pin number 3 is connected to the led and pin number Four is connected to the positive of the buzzer. So now we will understand how we are writing this code. So first we are using basically three digital pins: pin number two, pin number three, and pin number four. So we are defining integer PIR pin. So for PIR pin, I am just writing a variable integer PIR pin. So this PIR pin is assigned to the pin number two. Then integer LED pin. So the here variable is LED pin. It is assigned as pin number 3 then integer buzzer pin so buzzer pin is assigned to 4 okay now once the declaration is over then we'll go to the void setup so inside the void set we can write down this pin mode the pir pin is re input pin so because i want to get the data from this uh, pir sensor so this is we use as the input pin then this led pin and buzzer pin both will act as a output pin because i want to uh, heard the sound and i want to see the led is blinking or not so both are output pins then i i just uh, wrote serial dot big so that i can uh, start the serial communication to see the what is happening in the serial monitor so i wrote the code here so if digital read from the pir pin so whatever data i am getting from the pir pin pir sensor this pin either it is a high or low so if this data will be high then i can give a signal to the uh, this led so digital right i am writing digital right led pin will be high that means the led will glow similarly i'll give a signal to the buzzer pin so that means buzzer pin and led pin pin number 3 and pin number 4 will be high and there is a uh, text will show in the serial monitor for that i wrote serial dot print ln movement else digital right led pin low if the if the data which is coming from the pir sensor is low it means not high so all this will be led and the buzzer will be low and in serial print you will get no movement so you can click on that link so you can go to the tinker card
कॉपी लिंक तो वी कैन ओपन इन द ऑलरेडी ओपन सो मेनी टाइम ओके नाउ वी कैन सेट द स्क्रीन सो नाउ यू कैन सी हियर ओपन दैट ऑल okay so now you can see here whatever setup i just show this will come in this so i am showing in this from tinker cat so once you connect all these things you can see here i'll go to the simulate so this program is already there in the tinker cat website so so you can see here this same code is written here and up and they have connected this thing So now you can see I am just simulating the software, simulating this program. So I am giving start simulating. So now the program is started. So you can see here. This is the range of the PIR sensor. So this is the range of the PIR sensor. If there is a movement, if there is a movement, you can see I can have a. So there you can see serial monitor is there. So then now there is no movement, so it is showing not detected. So nothing is detected. So you can see if there is a movement here. One minute, let me. Okay. So when there is a movement, there is a movement. You can see this LED is blinking. This LED is blinking. So movement stops. There is no blinking of LED, and there is no sound also. Okay, so this PIR sensor will detect the movement. Okay, that means if it is moving, you can go to the code and you can see. You can see also when we are moving, it will swing detected. So you can see, is there any movement? Mean it will show the light is glowing as well as speaker will be on. If there is no movement, there is no detection. Okay. So this is the security system you can easily make using uh, Arduino Uno. If you have PIR sensor, that hardware also you can do using breadboard. So next slide we can go. So, so this PI sensor will give the digital data. Now we'll talk about some uh, analog sensors. So we'll go to the, the diagram. So you can see here in this diagram, uh, we are using some analog temperature and light sensors. So basically, you can see in this figure. So there is a TMP. Uh, It is a temperature sensor. We can see, or we can have LM35 as the uh, temperature sensor. Then we are having some LDR. So if there is a light, will be detected. Then it will show the uh, what is the intensity of the light. So you can see in the LM uh, in this LM35, this has three pins. So the rightmost pin is connected to the five volt. The black wire is connected. So I have I have put this. LM35 as well as LDR to the breadboard. So this rightmost pin is connected to the black wire. It is connected to the 5 volt, and this leftmost pin is connected to the sorry, this black one is connected to the ground, and this red one is connected to the 5 volt. And this middle pin is a data pin. It's a middle pin data pin, which is connected to the blue wire, and it is connected to the pin number. A one or the analog pin number A one. Similarly, you can see this LDR one pin is connected using this yellow wire. It is connected to the A zero. 
then <coughs> so another end of this pin this earlier pin is connected to the 5 volt so this earlier is connected using this ground with uh, ground with this resistor and it is connected to the because if you are not using any resistor there is a chance that high current can flow to this earlier and there is a chance of burn up the earlier now once the connection is over so here we are having two data pins one is connected to a0 and another is connected to a1 which are the analog outputs from these sensors which is connected to the analog uh, input pins now you can go to the code okay. so you can see here in this code we are first using this uh, integer type of data type so first is a light sensor so light sensor so it is a variable which is assigned as the pin number a0 then another integer uh, type of data type which is assigned to the pin number a1 that is called temperature sensor so we will run the code first so i want to be this uh, the temperature sensor as the or pin number a0 as the input pin then pin number a1 which is nothing but the light sensor is your input pin then i started the serial communication so for that i wrote serial dot begin 9600 then void loop so it runs it <coughs> so uh, first i write down i just uh, mentioning another variable integer light reading so this is integer integer data type with a variable write reading it will store the data analog read light sensor so whatever the data will come from the light sensor that means pin number a0 it will be stored in the light reading so then i want i want to write down the serial print light reading that's why i put so this is very basic character so this is that's why i wrote in the same <coughs> the double brackets then serial print l then light reading so light reading will take the data from the light sensor that will show here then i am mentioning another variable integer type that is uh, temperature reading so so this variable will store the data which will come from the temperature sensor that means pin number a1 then as i told so the resolution is uh, 10 bits in this analog pins so whatever data will come so as it is a 5 volt board so it is again whatever the temperature data will come it is multiplied by 5 here then again it is divided by 1024 as its resolution is uh, 10 bit or to the power 10 <coughs> so converting from 10 millivolt per degree so using this formula flow equal to temperature c voltage minus 0.5 into 100 we can get the temperature data in the centigrade so it is stored in this temperature c so serial print temperature you can see so finally we can able to see this code in the serial monitor the serial dot print ln degree centigrade after that we put a delay of one second now we can go to that site go to that particular go to the previous previous slide right, go to the previous slide ok click here I opened it opened already there Yes, yes. Okay. This uh, it is there. Okay. Now we can go to the simulate here. So this is this program is also there in the uh, Tinkercad. So you can see here. So same code it is written here. Now when we will run the codes now I am running the code you can see I will go to the serial monitor so in serial monitor you can see it is showing the light reading is 54 and the temperature is 24.71 degree ok so continuously after 1 millisecond delay it is showing the uh, light intensity value as well as temperature value 
Now what we can do, we can change this light intensity value as well as temperature value and we can check whether the sensor is detecting this or not. So we can click here on the temperature. So now we can increase or decrease the temperature. Now I increase the temperature up to 58 degree. Similarly, I can increase the light in intensity to light intensity also. Now we will check to the I will go to the serial monitor you can check here. So light reading is now 938.5 and your temperature is 58.89 degree. So, so this is the simulation in the same manner you can uh, do this same setting in the breadboard and you can find out using LN35 analog temperature sensor you can see what is the temperature value and what is the light intensity value. Next you can go to the next program. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Next, uh, we are using the same DHT sensor. So, DHT sensor is uh, your digital humidity and temperature sensor. So, using this DHT sensor, the data will come from a digital sensor and will fade to the digital pins. So here we can get humidity as well as temperature from the sensor. So you can go to the code. Okay. So one thing is that when I'm going to, so when I'm going to the uh, uh, DST sensor, this type of uh, library or this DST library we need to include. So that's why we wrote include DST.h. So I've included this library. Then we defined this particular pin, DST pin to the pin number 2 as I have connected to pin number 2. Then, <coughs> then we defined which type of DST I am using. So I am using DST 22 because there are different type of DST there. DST 11, DST 22. So here we are taking DST 22. So in the next line I wrote DHT capital, the small DST, DST pin and DST type. So basically we are initializing the DST sensor for normal 16 megahertz Arduino. Then in void setup, I wrote the serial communication begin 96000 baud rate. Then serial print LN DST XX test. Then we initialize the DST begin. That means the DST <coughs> uh, uh, sensor will start working. Then you can see here. Uh, in the loop, first we have given the delay, then I have de declared two, three variables, float H, float T and float F. So it will read the humidity, so I am writing DST dot read humidity. So it will read the humidity value from the sensor, then DST read temperature, it will read the temperature value from the sensor. And main in the uh, one point to be noted, when I am writing DST read temperature in bracket true that means it will read the temperature in Fahrenheit. So if I am not writing anything it will read the value as a Celsius. If I am writing DST dot read temperature true that means it will read the value as a Fahrenheit. Then I write a code if it is this is a value if it is non it is nan H or it's nan T or it is nan D then any of the value it is not a number then it is fail to read the data. Then it will check whether the value H, T or F contains a not a number. If it is anyone will be not a number, then it will write a code write in the serial monitor fail to read the DST sensor. Then the same code by using the serial dot print we can find out the humidity and temperature value. Then I write a code if that humidity value is greater than 70 or the temperature value is greater than 50, then we can write the pin number 13 we can send a pin number 13 to a high value okay so in pin number 13 if i connected a led that led will glow and this will glow for a uh, 0.2 millisecond or if i write down 2000 it will glow for a 2 millisecond okay i can show this thing so 
so just go down previous or previous it is not there ah, click here second half not came Okay, now you can see uh, uh, the same code I have written here. So, when I simulate the code, so this code taken from ok.com. So, ok.com has a lot of uh, examples. So, uh, you can click on this link and you can open, Is it, can, can you play, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, when you start simulation, okay, okay then, uh, so, so similarly, uh, same thing we can, you can do using your hardware also if you having this DST11 sensor. So, I think in the next half, in the second half, I may show you the DST sensor as well as we have some gas sensor. So, you can see, go to the slide, okay. Oh, next slide, okay. Similarly, we having some gas sensor. The gas sensor is also analog sensor. So, from the analog sensor, how we can take the data and how we can show the value what is the gas sensor value it also you can do using hardware using your or using your breadboard and using this gas sensor okay so for that i think this examples or this talk will be helpful to kick start the your engineering clinic journey or the projects whatever you given in the engineering clinic so basically deals with the digital pins and analog pins how to give data uh, or take data from the digital input and output pins and how to get a data from the analog pins and how to use the delay means how to hold that uh, particular thing for a certain time it's all about this so there are different type of sensors are there by taking different sensors you can write down different programs so for uh, for today for this session this is all from my side thank you for listening